Yeah, I know what you're thinking. This isn't the Isle of Armor. What does the digging duo have to do with Armorite? Well, I want to make sure that this is the best Armorite guide on YouTube, if not the best Armorite guide on the internet, so I'm going back to the basics. I'm going back to the Galar region to make sure we have the best way of getting Watts, the best way of spending Watts, the best way of getting Armorite, and then finding out if Armorite is even worth grinding with the Isle of Armor DLC. So if you appreciate the amount of work I'm putting into this video to help you out, don't forget to leave a like, share this video with your friends on social media, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, put this video everywhere because this is going to be one of the biggest guides of the expansion pass, and that's why I'm at the Digging Duo, because this is a very efficient way of spending watts. You get tons of resources, which now work even better because of the Cram-O-Matic. And another thing is you get a lot of wishing pieces in return, so I want to have a massive sample size and see how good the Digging Duo is. I started off with 270,000 watts, and we're going to see how many wishing pieces we get with those watts, as opposed to buying them from the watt traders. And then when you go back to the Isle of Armor, one of the best ways of getting Armorite or we'll determine if it is the best way of getting armor right is to do raids. So get the watts, get the wishing pieces, do the raids, and see how it all plays out. All right, moment of truth. So I started out with four wishing pieces, which means we got 75 wishing pieces from the 270,000 watts, which is 15 wishing pieces less than if we got the 90 directly by buying from a watt trader. However, we got an insane amount of items, 80 sunstone, 43 sticky barbs, uh, I think we have like 98 shiny stones, we almost got 100 shiny stones from that, so if you just see like thick numbers, the moonstone, the normal gem, metal coat, we got an insane amount of rewards off of that, several hundred rare bones, 100 comet shards, and then several hundred fossils, as well as like a gold bottle cap, and I think 20 regular bottle caps, absolutely worth it to use the regular digging duo, and then we still have a lot of wishing pieces. Also, it was AFK with the turbo controller. I made dinner, I edited some other videos. That's worth. Now, it took me about an hour and 15 minutes because you can average about 240,000 watts per hour spent with a turbo controller or just some really dedicated mashing. Now, it is going to vary because you could get really lucky and get lots and lots of items, or you can make it a lot quicker and only get one item per run. So, it's going to vary like that. But let's head back over to the Isle of Armor and let's talk about getting Armorite. So, here is where you want to be. The Courageous Cavern, and if you head down this little path, you can find three dens in very close proximity to each other. This is going to be important. Now, this den has Steel-type Pokémon, this den has Water-type Pokémon, and this one has Ghost-type Pokémon. Only do the Ghost and Water dens, because Steel, yeah, some of those Pokémon, they're just a little tough to kill, so it's not worth it. So what you want to do is you want to throw in a Wishing Piece, and then you start a raid. And you do a raid, and after you complete the raid, you get some Armorite. So let's take a look at the rewards based on the dens that you complete. If you do a 5-star den, you get 2 Armorite Ore as a reward. If it's a rare beam, then you end up getting three. Well, if you do a four-star raid, you get two Armorite Ore, and three if it's a purple beam. This immediately tells us that you should never do five-star raids if you are grinding for Armorite Ore, unless it's Chansey or Blissey. That is the exception because the rewards from those raids are absolutely insane, but if you're just doing regular Pokemon, you're spending extra minutes going through the extra shields, the higher level, the overall difficulty, for no gain whatsoever, and then 3-star raids will give you 1 Armorite Ore, and 3-star rare ones will give you 2. So the rare beams, I think they don't really matter either, like if you get a rare beam and it's just a 3-star Pokemon, go for it, you're getting 1 bonus Armorite regardless, and this is where the multiple dens come into play, because if you go into an event den, depending on the event, you're not going to get Armorite. Currently, with the launch of the Isle of Armor, we have all of the Gigantamax Pokemon and the Zera Aura Raids. None of those reward Armorite on the Isle of Armor, so not worth doing. Which means if we get an event in, then we're just not going to deal with it. So as we can see right here, we got a 4-star raid. That is absolutely worth doing, and it doesn't even take that long. So let's see how long it takes to do this, you know, 4-star Drifloom raid. Okay, this isn't even fair. We have Martin and Wobbuffet on the same team, but this raid is still only going to take a little over two minutes, so that's not that bad. However, when it comes to some of the other raids I've done, Aracuda, that's a one-turn raid. That takes less than a minute. 
That rare Drifblim that I showed when I was going through the list of the Armorite ones, that also only took about a minute, and then 4-star raids can average a minute and a half under 2 minutes still, especially if you're not catching the Pokemon. Like, 3 4-star raids, not really worth catching, not even fill out the Pokedex, even if you're like specifically going for Armorite Ore, so that's some quick rewards right there. And I also recommend not doing the Ghost as a first resort. That the Water Den is the best because you can get the Aracuda as a 3-star, and it's super fast. So, 5-star Golduck, this is where we just want to go and do a normal time skip, because 5-stars aren't worth it. However, we put the Wishing Piece in, if we just do a couple of seconds of time skipping, that's going to reset it, and then we have a good chance of getting a 3- or 4-star raid. We commit to that one, and it's good. Now, if you have more Wishing Pieces than you know what to do with, you can also just hop on over to the Ghost Inn, not even worry about that. So, this is going to be a good one, we're going to ready to battle, and this is absolutely going to be one turn. Or, hopefully, given the RNG. Actually, let's talk through this, because I'm doing a cheeky little special strategy that generally only works if you're targeting three or four star dens. I gave my Eternatus a lagging tail. This means if my allies get the three star Pokemon into shields, I'm going to be able to win on the first turn, most likely. Uh, Salazzle, not really a great Pokemon to have in this situation, but let's watch what happens. Let's see if we can actually do enough damage with the Heat more. With the, uh, with the extra damage, the so Fire Lash, that's resisted. Oh, see, that's, see, it's going to still be a big hit. That has to put in the shields. There we go. Now we're going to be getting a Helping Hand boosted Dynamax Cannon at the end of the turn. We tank the Max Quake, whatever, doesn't matter. It's three star. And this should be a one turn. And again, if you have, like, all offensive Pokemon, not like a Helping Hand support or something, you're good to go. And that's done. That fast. One Armorite or GG, including time skip, going from it. This is the fastest way to grind it. Okay, and here we go. That is going to be an event den. Hop back over here. And now we get to see what Pokemon we end up with. So there's like a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of things going on right here. Three-star Drift Blim. That's going to be a piece of armor right in like less than a minute. Now it does take like a couple seconds to throw in the wishing piece, restart, all of that other stuff. But it feels like if you're super tryharding this, you can get like a piece of armor right every minute and a half. And like even if you're just kind of being lax about it, like a piece of armor right every two minutes, probably just like a little less than two minutes. So that's going to be really good. Now another thing worth noting is that there's items that spawn around this rock, and they can be Armorite Ore. It's pretty uncommon, but you'll get a decent amount if you just kind of keep checking. What you need to do is time skip, and then complete a den. Time skipping on its own won't cause items to respawn, but if you go into a den and then complete it, it's actually going to refresh the area, so a day will have passed, and then an item will respawn. So once you've done that, and if you're mindful of it, check the rock, and you can just kind of add to your Armorite Ore efficiency per hour, but that's mostly going to be how this works. So now we need to go and check out the Digging Paw and see if if there's like enough watts you get in return, because that's pretty much the big reason why you're getting Armorite. Now, depending on your luck with Chansey Raids, 4-star Raids, and Purple Beams, and your unlock of Event Dens, you're probably going to be getting around 1 Armorite per Wishing Piece, probably a little more than that. And as you can see, we can go through the battles very fast. So, my main concern was wondering, like, oh, what happens if you don't get enough Armorite to offset the Wishing Pieces or the Watt spent on the Armorite? But it really doesn't seem that way, so let's go and do 5 runs of Digging Paw, and let's see if we get some kind of average. Now, the thing is, you can get several hundred thousand in a crazy run and that's going to really skew the numbers but you just do an average run and you're already getting a lot of it back so that's 28,000 right there and if we're thinking about like one armorite ore per wishing piece seven armorite ore 21,000 we're still coming ahead on watts while also getting a lot of other rewards but then all you need to do is get like the one several hundred thousand that just throws it over the top that's 20,000 we're gonna see if we can get it like one in five that was a 33,000 run, and then we just got 20,000, and now we're going to be going for the last one. And that was 29,000. So at least you're coming out ahead on Watts, and let's say it takes about 45 minutes to get those 35 pieces of Armorite, just from the numbers that we've seen. Well, let's see how many Watts we have currently, because I was pretty much reset back to zero. So we got about 150,000 Watts in 45 minutes, but it cost us an effective... 100,000 watts, 90,000 watts to get the wishing pieces for those dens. 
So that's about 60,000 watts in 45 minutes. Now anyone that knows how to do the DIN resetting knows that we can get a lot of watts faster. So let's find out how many watts per hour we can get from just the pure DIN resets. Now if you're time skipping optimally, you can do a time skip in about 20 seconds, but the average is going to be a little higher than that, so you can kind of count on 5,000 watts per minute, 60 minutes in an hour, that's going to be 300,000 watts profit per hour just by time skipping, but I'm going to say, it's a lot less fun to do this, it's pretty boring. Also, if you're time skipping, I would say it's still worth to just go and do a Chansey Den. So let's go switch our Pokemon, do that. We're going to get some armor right back. Like, that is going to be an exception. Zacian, physical Pokemon. So let's do this. Three-star Chansey, let's go. So what I feel like this comes down to is Digging Paw and RNG. I feel like if you're doing tons and tons of max raid battles, and you're doing like 30 to 40 max raid battles an hour, super high efficiency, and you're getting like 49 pieces of armorite per hour, which means you get 7 opportunities at Digging Paw, if one of those per hour becomes like one of the super digging crazy several hundred thousand watts, then that means you're either like breaking even with the soft reset method, or coming out ahead. However, at the end of the day, you just take the 270,000-ish watts per hour, use that on the digging duo while AFK or something, and then you just get all the rewards that we started off with at the end of the video. So I really don't feel like this is the best way of farming for watts. But again, it all comes back to fun. Now I do know there's people that have done like high intensity watt mashing to get millions and millions of watts and they're completely okay with it, but I also think that there is value in doing the max raid battles because I was having a lot of fun just grinding three and four star raids for this video and you're also ending up with some rewards. And I feel like those rewards do add up over time. That the three stars do give you a large experience candy. You get extras if you are doing some rare dents. You're going to find a couple of those per hour. And then the four stars will kind of balance out the rest of the large candies as well. And then you're getting items, TRs, money, uh, potentially just some regular rare candies, bottle caps. All kinds of goodies just from the regular raid rewards. So passively, you're also getting a Pokemon to level 100. You're making... You know, a couple thousand, potentially like a hundred thousand extra Poké Dollars. Haven't done the exact math on that one. But there are returns kind of offsetting the Watt deficit. And like I said, if you get some really good digging paw, then that means you're not falling behind, you know, 240,000 Watts per hour by doing the uh, Armorite method. You're, it's probably going to be close to like 50, 60,000, maybe a hundred thousand if you get like a decent amount of RNG through digging paw. Like, it does take a good amount of time to get Armorite, even when playing efficiently. Oh, another thing to make note of is that when you're doing this, you should also search for Max Mushrooms occasionally, if you're interested in that. I already did a guide about that, and I wasn't even following it. I was too focused on the Armorite and the Wishing Pieces and stuff, so there we go. That's a little bit of extra to get on top of that. And I know that there is a girl that you can talk to and that she can dig for Armorite, but searching for her... The Isle of Armor has like so few fly spots and she's in such awkward locations that she is not worth it. And I think this video kind of proves that. With how fast I was getting arm right through the max raids, just kind of like focusing on that, don't even focus on her. Like if she's in your way naturally during gameplay, yeah, you can maybe get a couple of pieces of arm right off of her, but you know, I don't think she's worth it. It's definitely going to be the best way of getting arm right is through max raid battles. And then there's other things that you can use your arm right on. Like if you want to get the new move tutors. So this is going to show you guys the fastest way of getting arm right to use for the move tutors. If you don't even care about watts and all of the other like crazy min maxi things going on in the game. So we had 35 when we went wasted them on digging paw. We have four more if we were doing max raids this entire time. Yeah, we'd be able to get like a full team or we'd be able to get mini Pokemon, whatever new tutor moves we want. And also, you can talk to a girl in an island on the workout sea, and for 10, she will actually reset a Pokemon's EVs. Now, from the amount of raids we're doing, it might not matter, because we are getting EV reducing berries through these raids, even on like the 3 and 4 star raids. Also, if you just kind of like naturally shake some trees, you might have not enough. But if like, let's say you're trying to reset like 3 or four Pokemon's entire EV spread, you only have enough berries for two or three. Yeah, 10 Armorite to do that feels kind of worth, because otherwise you're shaking like 50 berries, and that could take longer than the 10 minutes to get the 10 Armorite. 
So I hope that gives you an idea as to the other interactions going on with the Armorite, but I don't think it's just like this kind of super crazy OP way of getting an insane amount of watts and then using them on honey, but even when it comes to honey, like the best thing happens at 400,000 where you get the discounted vitamins for EV training. And that's effectively all that this kind of like folds into. Yeah, you can do other things with watts, like get several million and then digging duo on a turbo controller for like 10 hours while you sleep and then get a million bottle caps or something and then have millions of polka dollars or using cramomatic recipe ingredients. That's kind of like where it all comes down to. So overall, if you enjoy doing raids, do them in that spawn the olive armor and then use your armorite as you see fit. And I hope I covered everything about armorite so you can make the right decisions for you. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.